In the previous video, we talked about multi-label classification, where an input data could belong to more than one class. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about if you were to use an artificial neural network to address a multi-label classification problem, what kind of uh, output function are you going to be using in the final layer? Is it going to be softmax or something else? So without further ado, let's just get started. So we did talk about this item and this item on our list. Uh, so today is going to be this item, right? A and N and multi-label classification, the output function, the things that you need to know about it. Now, imagine you've got this artificial neural network and you only look at the final layer of that neural network, okay? So these four circles are the four neurons that you have. Now, imagine in this particular example, you have four classes and it's a classic multi-class classification problem, meaning that an input data could belong to uh, only one of these classes, right? Now, in that particular case, we, we, you know that we use the softmax function. That's just classic function that, that we've been using. And the reason for that is the output of the softmax function, let's, let's just uh, you know, show that the, the ultimate output, of, like if we have, uh, let's say, the softmax, the soft, I'm just gonna put soft here, right in here, right? Maybe also put max just for consistency. So if you have the softmax uh, function applied to the outputs of those neurons, what happens is, if you look at each of these outputs, they all sum up to one, right? So if one of the outputs gets to become bigger, the other outputs will get crushed. And that is what you want. Because if an input data belongs to, say, let's say, let's, let, okay, let's just uh, give an example. Let's say you have four classes here, right? So let's say the, the first class is uh, class cat, the other one is class dog, the other one is class duck, and the last one is, say, cla a class goat just came up with random classes. And let's say an input data is an image and you wanna say whether uh, that input in that image belongs to a class cat, dog, duck, or goat, right? So what you'd like to do, you wanna train your artificial neural network. Now in this black box over here, you have all sorts of neurons and layers and weights and stuff, right? So regardless of what's happening inside, you'd like to train the parameters of your neural network in such a way that it would learn to, if then, if for, let's say, all of the images of class cat, you'd like the output of, uh, of this particular neuron, this, this guy over here, to be very high and the outputs of all the other three neurons to be very low. In other words, if I were to just plot a distribution of the values across all of the images of cats, you'd like to see, and this is gonna be a little tricky to plot, you'd like to see some very sort of high value of the output here, and you'd like to see very low values across all of the other classes. So that's for class cat, all of the images uh, that belong to class cat, right? And you cannot have a scenario where you will have, uh, you know, you know. So, 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 so if cat is high, everything else has to be nearly zero. Why? Because the sum of all of the outputs of softmax has to be one. So if one element goes high, it means that everything else has, uh, have, uh, you know, has to get crushed, right? So you you can't have something like. Uh, like, I don't know, like something like, okay, we have a high output, very high output here, also very high output here. You can't have that with softmax, right? Because the sum of these outputs cannot become one anymore. Each one is nearly one, right? It's, each one is really, really high, the maximum of softmax, right? So this is typical with multi-class classification. Now, things are slightly different when it comes to uh, multi label classification. Namely, uh, in multi-label classification, an input data can belong to more than one class, right? So let's say, uh, again, let's say you have cat, duck, goat, um, let's say dog, right? Let's say this time the task is which one of these animals 
are present in this particular image. So in one image, you could have more than one animal, obviously, right? So this is a multi-label classification problem where an input data could belong to more than one class. Here, you would like some sort of an output function can, let's say for all of the images in which we have both cat and goat, you'd like the distribution of the outputs, um, the elements of your output, um, to be sort of like this, right? So, so you'd like to have, in general, very high values for cat, not so much for duck. Again, high values for goat, and again, not so much for dog, right? So for if you have 1,000 images and you made predictions out of a trained neural network, and you just looked at the distribution of the outputs for class 1, class 2, class 3, and class 4, you'd like to see some sort of a distribution like this, meaning that for nearly all of those images, the outputs for this class, basically the first neuron and the, and the third neuron, were really high, and the outputs of the other two neurons were nearly zero. But this is exactly what I said that you can't do properly with a softmax function, right? So what? So how can you define an output function where you could say that, okay, I want the output of each one of these neurons to be as high as possible, independent, remember, independent of the outputs of the other neurons? And the answer is sigmoid. Bet, I bet you didn't see that coming, right? Um, yeah, so what, so what do I mean by that? Uh, so the, the key word is in that independent thing that I just mentioned. Now, imagine that you had a sigmoid function for each one of these neurons separately. It's, this is very different to softmax, right? Because in softmax, you have dependency amongst the outputs, whereas here, uh, there is no dependency. Each uh, output can range from 0 to 1 because that's what sigmoid is. It crushes the input, whatever the value of the input is, between 0 and 1, right? So each element of your output can all of a sudden get as high as 1, which is the maximum of sigmoid, or say as low as 0. And the sum of the outputs no longer have to become 1. That's the whole secret of it right? Each one is a sigmoid separately. So in other words, with, in this case, if an image belongs to, uh, say, the first two classes, uh, you would get values very close to 1 for all of the images belonging to class 1 and class 2. Let's say you also want to, you know, uh, consider the case where uh, you have many images that belong to the first class, second class, and the last class. So again, for all of those images, nothing here for the third neuron, but very high outputs for the final neuron, for the fourth class, right? So that is the secret. You use sigmoid function uh, for each one of these outputs, and then that's it. Uh, you basically turn a multi-label classification into let me see whether I can choose a nice color here. So each one of these guys, each one of them become independent of the other. And each one of them, you know when you use a sigmoid function, this is basically classic binary classification problem, isn't it? Binary classification. But if you have k classes, you have k binary classification problems, okay? That's how you treat multi-label classification. Uh, if you have k classes, you turn it into k multi-label classification problem, where each output can, can basically range from 0 to 1, independent of, uh, of the other outputs, and all of a sudden you, ha you can have values like this, like this, and then this, right? So this is the case for like if an image belongs to the first class and the second class, you would get simultaneously for the same input data, you, you get very high values, very, like close to one out of these two outputs and very low values close to zero out of these two final outputs, meaning that the network thinks and believes that that input data belongs to, the, to class one and class two.
In the next video, we're going to be talking about how to represent the ground truth vector to your neural network in a multi-label classification problem.